What is the number one most common technique mistake I see with my students? That is very easy. It's the dreaded gorilla grip. And by that, I mean a really tight grasp of the instrument, which is really going to do you no favors whatsoever. So let's explore this and get rid of that gorilla grip once and for all. First of all, what's the problem with gripping really tight? Okay, the problems are that number one, you're gonna create a lot of tension in your hand. The tension from your hand is gonna go up into your arm, into your shoulder. It's gonna create tension in your body and in your neck. It's gonna affect your breathing. And when you've got that tightness in your hands, your technique will be much more limited. You won't be as supple uh, when you move your fingers. Also, you can really give yourself bad injuries. These, uh, you know, tension injuries in your hands. People can find themselves getting repetitive strain injury and all this kind of nasty stuff, which could even stop you playing your instrument altogether. So this is a very important thing to get right. Let's look at the various points we need to address to eliminate Gorilla Grip and give you perfect hand technique when you play saxophone. Hey, if you want some more cool technique stuff and a lot more besides like how to practice and improvising and cool tips and tricks, go and check out my Saxophone Success Masterclass. Uh, the link is right there on screen now, or you can click the link in the description. It's a fantastic way to instantly transform your saxophone playing all around, and it's a free gift for you. All you got to do is fill in your email and you get the workshop for completely zero pounds, zero dollars, zero yen <laughs> it's just free so help yourself to the saxophone success masterclass and now let's get back to avoiding this gorilla grip the first thing you want to do to avoid that tension in your hands is just shake your wrists and make sure that when you play saxophone your wrists are dropped okay your wrists are dropped they are down like imagine that you've got a heavy weight on your wrists so that you're not doing what I call beaver pose. I've done a video on that where your fingers are pointed down like this in the instrument. No, you drop your wrists down. You drop your elbows down into your body with it. Keep your elbows tucked in. Your wrists are dropped. Now that means that you have got a lovely straight line which is going through from your hand into your arm, okay? There's no break in your hand like this and there's no break in your hand like that. So, and you'll see that if your wrist is in that correct position, your pinky is already over these table keys. So if you're reaching for these table keys with your pinky, that's a, a sure sign that you have got beaver paw. So no beaver paws, drop your wrists. The next thing is to make sure that you have not got any tension in your hands and you have a lovely gentle curve like a C. So imagine you're carrying two drinks and you've got like a nice C shape in your hands. They just go straight on your instrument like that and you are good to go. Now, the next point is that the keys on your saxophone have got springs on them. All you have to do is press the key in and the saxophone key will spring back. Okay, you can hear it. That means that you don't need to press down and pull up with your wrist. All you need to do is one movement. That one movement is to push the key down and you can do it very gently indeed. So push down and relax, push down and relax, push down and relax. That means that you're not using excessive pressure. Now you'll know that you're using excessive pressure because it turns into this white knuckle ride with your hands like this. And you'll see that you create these, uh, what I call duck beaks, okay? A duck beak is when you're pushing your finger and you create all these different um, angles. No, it should just be a C. You push the key down once and you let go. You wanna make sure that you're keeping your hands nice and close to the keys because if you're flying up here, it's very inefficient to do so, all right? So once you've got rid of that gorilla grip and you're not doing duck beats and you're not doing beaver pose, and you're not doing what I call tower bridge where your hands are flapping up in the air like this. That will give you a lovely relaxed technique and you'll be able to play much faster, much easier. You'll be able to get to the palm keys. You'll be able to get to the left hand pinky keys down here nice and easily without reaching them like that. And your whole technique will be drastically improved. So stop the gorilla grip. <laughs> Stay nice and relaxed and your saxophone playing and your technique will thank you. Now, when you do it properly, 
it's going to look like this. <laughs> If you've got shoddy hand technique, that same exercise is going to look a little bit more like this. I can't even do it. It feels like a real struggle to do that. So, for goodness sake, stop fighting yourself, lose the gorilla grip, do those uh, nice technique points which I've mentioned, and you'll be flying with your saxophone technique. <laughs> right, short and sweet today, but no less important. So, lose the gorilla grip, remember to stay nice and relaxed, curved fingers, all the stuff that I've mentioned in the video, and your technique will thank you. Remember, you can go and check out the Saxophone Success Masterclass using the link that you can see there. And as always, there's bonus videos and uh, a lot more very, very cool stuff <laughs> to help you inside the Inner Circle membership. That's the best way if you want access to me. That's practically the only way <laughs> if you want access to me. Um, if you bought me a coffee, thank you so much. If you want to buy me a coffee, thank you so much as well. And until next week's lesson, make sure you practice hard practice smart and enjoy your music. See you later. You're playing and your practice, just use the link you can see there or... Uh, nice. You can come in now.